JC Tickets provides first class trips to Ravens Road games, including airfare, four star hotels, game tickets, and cocktail parties. We also help provide great seating locations to all Ravens home games. JC Tickets, where the games begin. Visit us at jctickets.net. Ravens Wrap is sponsored by Bud Light, JCTickets.net, Geico Insurance, Dunaway Furniture, Ocean City Golf Club, RussellStreetReport.com, Comfort Inn Gold Coast, Holiday Inn Express, The Original Green Turtle, hosted by the Blue Ox Bar and Grill. And welcome back. It's the original Green Turtles Ravens Rap Show right here on Comcast Beach TV. Had the strongest Raven signaled affiliate on the peninsula, Delmarva's Rock Radio 93.5 The Beach. We are in the Ravens room, 127th Street and Coastal Highway at the Blue Ox Bar and Grill with Ravens News 44. Give yourselves a hand again. There you go. 20,000 strong, upwards of 20,000 strong uh, in Miami at Sun Life Stadium. So, uh, well, a job well done, certainly, in supporting your Ravens. And this has been a Ravens fan base that over the last couple of years has continually gotten better in supporting its team on the road. It's always been great at home, no question, but uh, the support on the road has been phenomenal. I know a couple of years back, I was down in Charlotte for the Carolina game, and boy, we overtook the city. It was great to see all the purple and black. Don't forget next week, folks, big show. Ravens owner Steve Bashotti will be joining us on this very set. Again, doors open at 5. The show begins at 7. First come, first serve. No reservations. Um, I'm going to have to get here early for my seat. Yeah, so. me too. And Mike, okay. make sure. <laughs> and this, he only does this once a year, and he only does it for his buddy Steve Pappas because he doesn't do anything, but he comes down here. Absolutely. Year in, year out. The only yeah. time you'll find Bashotti. Real Papo. That's right. With Papo. Well, continuing to talk about the 26 to 23 win over the Miami Dolphins, you know, the offensive line is something that we've talked about a lot. And, you know, only six quarterbacks have been sacked this season more than Flacco. He's been taken down 14 times through five games. They're on, he's on pace right now to be sacked 45 times, thus the trade for Eugene Monroe and to solidify that line, Bruce. But again, to take this one step further, you know, hopefully when Assembly comes back, that'll help in their tandem in the run game. But again, as we talked about it, I saw it for the first time myself. I've been trying to watch Gino Gronkowski very closely, but I really, for the first time, saw him be manhandled quite a bit. And look, Miami's another team, great front seven, good nose tackle. But I saw it for myself more than I've seen in the first four games up to this point. That's something, that obviously, they're going to have to work on. Listen, if you're seeing Gino the, the way we have in his first four or five games, you're going to have a, someone on his nose all year long. As soon as NFL teams see those weaknesses, that's what we do. We find the strength and weaknesses of football teams and prey on those. He's going to have someone on his nose. He's going to be offset until he can snap that ball and get underneath the pads and move a guy off. He's going to have trouble, and they'll do it over and over again. So, for again, moving the line of scrimmage is the key. The, the way the Ravens won that game in Miami, folks, is because they controlled first and ten for the first time in almost three weeks. In other words, defense saw second and six, second and five. Think about that. You have your whole playbook. You can screen. You can draw. You can go for the bomb. You can do all that stuff. Second and eight, second and nine. What am I saying to my guys? React to run. Play pass. React to run. Play pass. Mm. No, it's, a, it's an excellent point. I guess some positives, though, that came out, and certainly we know how tough Joe Flacco is. He gets up. He keeps on ticking. That's a great thing. Steve, you take a look at the wide receivers. We were talking about this off air as well. Only three active wide receivers, and you made the point, in the hot Miami sun, three active receivers. Marlon Brown couldn't go. Brandon Stokely was cut. Billy Bajima was uh, brought back onto the squad. That's reversed itself this week. We'll talk about that in a second. But hats off to, again, Torrey Smith. We talked about him. But how about Tandon Doss? How about Deontay Thompson? And even your buddy at tight end, Ed Dixon, as you mentioned, came out of witness protection. <laughs> <laughs> he did. They, they found him out of nowhere. Cinderella story. Now, I said, you know, once you put Deontay Thompson on the other side, you know, that makes it even in the Buffalo game. When he went out, they came in. 
you know, once he goes out there, then all of a sudden the defensive backs have got to drop back because you got two speed guys. And now Doss is catching the ball on the inside. I mean, it's a good crew. And for them, for them to be able to go the whole game with only three wide receivers speaks of the condition that Harbaugh has them in. If you ever watch their practice, you know, they go on the clock, Bruce, and you know this from seeing them. You know, they're conditioned to game-like conditions where everything is on the clock. You get in the huddle, you get back up, and, you know, it's a very fine-tuned machine. Craig, to your point uh, in the last segment, you talked about balance and, and uh, certainly for the Ravens needing it, Joe Flacco needing it, uh, 40 runs for the Ravens, 32 passes. So a, a much more balanced approach than what it was in Buffalo. And despite the fact that even in the first half, I think they were still only averaging maybe two and a half yards a carry, they still stuck with it in the second half. It's, it's hard to do. I mean, you run two, two and a half yards a carry, and you still stick with it as an NFL uh, team in this passing era. Uh, but it, it's the formula, like I said before, it's the formula to success over the course of the, the, the season. Uh, 16 games, 17 week season, you have to figure out how to run a balanced offense. Uh, and to their credit, they stuck with it, even though it was not working as they would like in the first half. And, and it certainly, again, paid dividends later on the game. As, again, especially that last drive where I think five of the six plays on that drive before the Justin Tucker winning field goal were running plays. Just one pass. That was to Torrey Smith. So outstanding job. Bruce, I want to ask you about this. And, and we got a great question for the audience a few weeks ago about this in terms of the scheme. Now, the scheme's not changed. They run that zone blocking scheme, a lot of double teams. And then based on what the tackle does or the defensive end does, right. then it d determines which lineman peels off to the linebacker. But it's seems to me on those zone stretch plays left and right, the defensive linemen are getting a lot of penetration, and that's an issue. It seems to me with the guys that we have, mixing in more isolation, man-to-man -man type running plays, power plays, some guard traps, some counters occasionally, seems to me mixing more of that in might actually be helpful for this running game. Your I, thoughts? I totally agree. I, I mean, when, when we talk about zone stretch play, it's a hat on a hat, okay? And that way, in order to do that, you absolutely must manhandle the man in front of you. you got to beat him a lot, lot more than he beats you. So when they do that, it's like, take that guy, and if he's going that way, you take him that way and let the back read it. But that means changing the line of scrimmage. We don't have the Orlando Browns, the Wally Williams. We don't have the Maulers that we used to. So I like ISOs. I, I, I like that. I like the Wham Blocks. And I think our guards are, are very, very athletic and can trap. We don't tackle trap and mm -hmm. or can run. Those are the things that I think that you see some other offensive lines execute. Uh, New England starting to do a little bit. Denver, Denver's one that really uses their athletic ability offensively and get in there. And it, it mixes up your defensive mindset. Because understand defense. We have... A, a, a call made, we're going somewhere, and then we don't like to think that much, especially people up front. They're, they're not thinkers, okay? Offensive <laughs> linemen are maulers. It's like the big old mule team. Remember that old commercial when you see the mules just taking the thing? I mean, if they're moving and they're moving you off the football, those guys that are 330 or 340, they can go 15, 16 plays and they'll be more energized about beating the guy up in front of them than you'd think. Steve? I was just gonna, I mean, for, for the people out there, I mean, you're zone blocking, you hear it so much now. I mean, what are the basic differences between the way we were playing last year compared to, you know, what Castillo is bringing in? Well, I think a lot of stuff is the same. They're, they're sticking with the zone block, but as Mike mentioned earlier, sometimes you, you, you gotta double and rub, okay? Which is what players say, keep, like a Ray Lewis, in other words, in his prime, and with that big front four. Keep those linemen off of me. So they would allow, it's called no slips. So when you had the double, you double the nose guard, and then the other guard would peel off mm -hmm. and try and get to the linebacker. Well, Tony Saragusa's job, when he got the double, was to grab on and not allow the other guard to get back to the secondary players, and that's called no slips. And that way, a guy like Ray and you had it with, uh, uh, what, what's the other guy from Miami before he was like, uh, the, the Sam Adams. Middle, yeah. yeah, the other middle line. Well, when they can run side to sideline, that's why Ray was so successful so early. I mean, he was a tackling machine, and he wasn't blocked. And, and I think what's happening, Steve, 
is they got to get more into that. They got to tackle trap. They got to wham. And, and I think with Leach, they got ISO. In other words, that fullback's got to lead into the hole, which was the big one that Brandon and Pierce had. Mm -hmm. Remember out of the nine yard line? Yeah. That wasn't that beautiful thing? Boom, he goes, the hole opens up, and it's like, oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, it's all about physicality and, and playing to the strengths. Uh, I just wonder if anything, maybe some of the techniques have been changed up. But again, the scheme as a whole is the same, but maybe they need to mix it up a little bit more. And we'll, we'll, see, if, we'll see if they do that, because it still needs the numbers, Craig, still need to get better, as we talked about. I mean, you got to do better than 2.7. Again, it, 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 they, they, made, uh, you know, they made some plays, but they need to make more this week to keep Rodgers off the field. And a lot of it's pride, you know. The, the game is won in the trenches on the offensive and defensive lines. And a lot of that is just will. <coughs> Who has the stronger will to do it? Um, this trade midseason with Monroe uh, makes a statement, and hopefully the rest of the guys on the offensive line, their will gets a lot stronger now because they don't want to be the next one uh, with the empty locker. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was interesting, Bruce, that you said about Ray Rice. Is, you know, I don't think he's back either. I mean, I counted four times where he was making moves and his legs just collapsed on him. You see that? You know? Yeah. And, and he can't. The other thing is, I mean, he's two or three times, you know, when, when he's not running good, he stutters. You know, he doesn't hit the hole hard. He's sort of like um, Jamal Lewis used to be. But, you know, the other thing is there are three or four times a game where if he could get his leg up, which he doesn't do when he's not running well, but when he's running well, he'll slip that tackle. You know, three or four runs where he's one tackle away from going distance. So, Steve, so you, so what, what we're saying is here he's not quite right yet. And, and why wouldn't you be a hip flexor? I'm not a doctor, but I do play one on Papo's show. Uh, you know, I can do that a little bit. But, it's you know, he's not quite right, so he needs to get it going. And again, as we get into the Green Bay Packers, you got to keep Aaron Rodgers off the football field. They got some tremendous weapons. They're running the ball better than I've ever seen a Green Bay team run it in the last two weeks. They were so balanced last week, 31 runs, 30 passes. Um, you know, I'm believing in home, home field and all that, but it's going to be one hell of a game. Some positives and what we're going to talk about the defense coming up in the next segment because there's a lot to talk about with them and a lot of good things out of that. Some positive things offensively, about 40% on third down conversions. We ran 17 more plays, had 13 more minutes of uh, total time of possession. We talked about the fact the running game in the second half was pretty good. Uh, receivers, a lot of different guys getting in the mix. Ed Dixon with a couple of catches, getting his confidence back as well. And Joe taking the hits but keeping, uh, you know, keeping uh, coming back up and, and uh, you know, hey, we're, we're right back at it. He was 19 for 32 in the game. He did have an interception, but uh, all in all, that wasn't really on him. That was due to the fact that, uh, you know, McKinney let, missed his block. But we've got more to come. We're going to wrap things up. we got more to come in the next segment here. It is the Ravens Rap Show on Comcast Beach TV at Delmarva's Rap Radio, 93.5 The Beach. What's this all about? We're giving Rich the NFL experience of a goal line dive. Really? <laughs> There's an easier way to get an ultimate NFL fan experience. Just snap the tag wherever Bud Light is sold and you could win. Bud Light in the NFL. Here we go. Can I make it? On the internet, yes. Into the end zone, no.